So what we are working on is this. It's a polygonized version of an old master's painting, which has some additional depth to it. So it's been extruded into 3D space. And in the last part, we already took care of generating a basic polygonized version on a 2D plane. And what we're going to do today is give that a bit more depth by extruding some faces of it. So let's head into Houdini. So that's my setup from the last time. When I move around in the viewport here, I can see the plane is really, really flat. So in order to give this thing a bit of depth is the thing I'd like to do is extrude those corner points here. So just move them up on the Y axis. And I can do that in Houdini by um, using what's called VOPS. So um, I'm going to drop down a whoop, point, a point VOP, exactly. And what a point VOP allows you to do is to go into the geometry and work with the individual points of that geometry. So let me show you. We dive in here. And what it has already created for us is two nodes. And um, one is an input, one is an output node. And on the input node, we can see lots of intrinsic attributes it provides us with. So the position, of course, uh, velocity, if it has them, force, age, and life. Of course, they are for working with particles. An ID, so each point there has an ID going from zero to whatever. Um, a color, UV space, normal, etc., etc. And what I'd like to do now is use my color value, so my brightness of a color, to move the points. And what I need to do in order for that is split my points into three components. So the point value is stored in a vector. That means the vector has three components for x, y, and z coordinate. And um, as I only want to adjust the y coordinate, I have to split that. And I'll do that in a node called vector to float. Hook that up here. And to output it later, I need to convert those three values back into a vector. So let's already do that. Um, float to vector. And that's gonna be output as a new point position. And what I want to do in here is I only want to adjust the y value so I can pipe the x and the z value directly into that output node. And for the y value, I want to add the diffuse color. So again, I need a vector to float node because color is stored as a vector as well with each component representing a, a red, green, and blue channel. So I'm going to go there. And now I would just, let's say I want to add the red channel to the Y position. I'm going to do that with an add node. Wire in my Y position, wire in my red channel, and wire that up to the output Y position. And we see nothing is happening at the moment. That's because we didn't highlight it. And now it just moved up uniformly. And let's check why that is. So up here, we have what's called geometry spreadsheet. And it displays me all the points attributes that I have. So these are my points here by ID. I'm in point mode now. And these are the attributes it has. It has. So position, um, these attributes are generated by the spray paint, SOP. So normals, orientation, uh, scale but it does not have a color value. And that is because um, in the previous step, we promoted the color value from a point to a primitive. So the points don't have a color value, but when I go into primitives up here, they have the color value. So what I'd like to do is disable that node. Just let me show you in the scene view. So now the color values get promoted to my point fob and now it does exactly what I told it to and move up those points a tiny bit. So let's just move that out here, shake it off, attach it down here, highlight it and reactivate it. So now I have my points moved and my colors promoted to a primitive, thus taking care of the triangles being shaded solidly. The next thing that would be nice is to be able to adjust the height of the extrusion here. And luckily, there's an easy way to do that on the point warp. In between no, my 
conversion that extracts the red color channel and my add node. I'm going to drop down a ramp parameter node. Drop that down here and set it to spline ramp. And when I go up now and highlight the point bob, this created an interface for me. An interface with a slope that allows me to tweak those values. So let's say um, I want them to be bigger. I can highlight the second output. So this actually maps the range of my input values to an output value. So now they're just being remapped from zero to one. So they're not changed at all. So let's remap them from zero to say two and the extrusion gets a bit bigger. Let's dial that back. And what I also can do is um, tell those points not to be linear, but to be, for example, a B spline, both of them, and add other points so I can shape the curves and really tweak the extrusion. Something like that. Or maybe even reverse the whole thing. Oops. So now the brighter values get extruded downwards. Okay, let me recapitulate what we just did. So I'm gonna finish that off here, something like that. What we did is within the point bob, the point bob allows us to work on an individual point level with geometry. So the thing I did is I imported both my position values and my color values. And those are both vectors, so they have three components, x, y, and z in the case of position and r, g, and b in the case of color. For both values, I extracted their components with a vector to float node, then took the red channel, remapped it with a ramp node, and added it to the white channel. So that's this output here, the white channel added with the red color value. And then I took this value along with the x position and the, and the z position that we don't want to change and converted it back to a vector and wrote it out to the point position. What the point bob does, it automatically executes all this stuff for each point there is in the geometry. So we only have to write that for one point and it automatically takes care of applying this to all the points in our geo. So I think it might be time to render this.